بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا ونبينا أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين لا سيما بقية الله في الأرضين أجل الله تعالى فرجه الشريف One of the respected books on ziyara would it be ziyara of Rasulullah or Ahlul Bayt in general or Ziyar of Abu Abdullah alayhi salam in particular is the book Kamilu Ziyarat by Ibn Qulaway. This book is very important for different reasons. One is that the author, as we will inshallah mention, is a very respected scholar who is actually one of the early scholars one of the great students of Sheikh Kulaini and also uh, the topic is interesting and also what the author says in the way he selected these hadith he says that he chose hadith from reliable narrators and this has been taken very seriously by our ulama in al Rajal, not only for authenticating hadith in this book, but also they have tried to see whether we can use occurrence in the chains of narrations in Kamil Ziyarat as a general way to verify reliability of these narrators in other words if someone is mentioned in one of the hadith in this book and we are not sure about his reliability it's not that we know he is reliable because if you already know okay you don't need or you are sure that he is not reliable for example maybe someone has a proof but someone that you are not sure can you say because it is mentioned by Ibn Qulaway that he only quotes from reliable people that this person is verified. This is called Tawthiq Am. This is one of the general ways of verifying reliability of narrators hadith. Tawthiq Khath means that someone says this person so and so is reliable. Ithaqatun for example. But Am means it's about many people. So this is a discussion in El Mirajal. And some ulama have accepted this and said any person who occurs in Kamilu Ziyarat is reliable, unless of course it's proved otherwise. And some people have said no. Only the person from whom Ibn Qulaway has received the hadith. So the last person in the chain is reliable. Or some people have said if the hadith are not mursal, and all the people between the uh, Ibn Qulaway and Imam and Ma'asum is mentioned, the name of Imam is also mentioned, that is reliable. In any case, this book not only for its content but also for its uh, way of verifying many narrators of hadith has been very highly regarded by our ulama and altogether there are 843 843 hadith in this book and they are classified in 100 eight uh, parts or chapters and Ibn Ghulaway himself 
died in 367 after Hijra, so he was in the fourth century. And as I said, he is very respected and he is uh, Qommi. He was born in the city of Qom and he had great teachers like Ahmad ibn Idris Ash'ari Qummi and his own father Muhammad ibn Qulaway and Shaykh Qulayni, Muhammad ibn Safar and Ali ibn Babaway, the father of Shaykh Saduq. These are his teachers. And Shaykh Mufid is the most known student of Qulaway, Ibn Qulaway. So someone like Shaykh Mufid studied with him. Ibn Qulaway himself also occurs in the chains of narrations of about 507 hadith. So he is frequently mentioned uh, by other scholars who have received hadith through him. In this book, there is a section which is section 54 and I chose this section uh, because it is about ثواب من زار الحسين عليه السلام عارفا بحقه The reward of someone who visits Imam Hussein عليه السلام but with this condition عارفا بحقه while this person, this visitor, this Za'ir has ma'rifa about the right of Imam Hussein alayhi salam. So it's not that every tourist who goes to Karbala receives this you know, thawa or every even uh, religious visitor gets this it must be someone who has ma'rifa about the right of Imam Hussein and for sure when it comes to right I am sure you appreciate that uh, uh, knowing the right is not by itself enough it's acknowledging the right and observing the right so if I know the right of my teacher or my mother or father and I don't observe and I'd say I know it I have ma'rifa <laughs> it doesn't help so when we say it means that with acknowledgement which means with recognition and commitment with observing the right not just knowing that there is such a right maybe some of the people who uh, didn't like Ahlul Bayt al-Musalam, they know and they knew their rights. Muawiyah, for example, knew their rights. So it's not just knowing, it's a matter of acknowledgement. In this section or chapter 54, there are 17 hadith, and many of them are very similar in content. And the main thing which is repeatedly mentioned in these hadith is forgiveness forgiveness is repeatedly mentioned but there are other things which are mentioned in some of them not all of them for example the first hadith is from Imam Sadiq Ali Salam Ibn Qulubay mentions all the narrators of hadith it says Haddathani Abi Rahimahullah and Abdullah ibn Ja'far al Himyari. So he quotes from his father and his father from Abdullah ibn Ja'far till he reaches Imam Sadiq alayhi salam. Qala man ata qabr al-Husayn alayhi salam arifan bihaqqih ghafar Allahu lahu ma taqaddama min dhambihi wa ma ta'akhar. In some versions Allah is mentioned, in some versions Allah is not mentioned. Means ghafar lahu ma taqaddama min dhambihi wa ma ta'akhar. Whoever comes to the grave of Abu Abdullah while he 
knows and acknowledges the right of Imam Hussein, Allah would forgive his sins, earlier ones and later ones, the old ones and the recent ones. تَقَدَّمَ مِنْ ذَنْبِي وَمَا تَأَخَّرَ As Allah says in the Quran, لِيَغْفِرَ لَكَ اللَّهُ مَا تَقَدَّمَ مِنْ ذَنْبِكَ وَمَا تَأَخَّرَ in Surah Fatih. This is one hadith. Uh, sorry, uh, the, the first hadith uh, is Manzar al Hussein. Man Atta Qabr al Hussein comes later. Manzar al Hussein alayhi salam, Arif and Bahaqi, Khafar Allah, Lahu ma taqatam min dhambi, wa ma taqha. Whoever visits the Imam Hussein alayhi salam. This similar concept. In some says Zara, some says Atta Qabr al Hussein. But the first one is this Manzar al Hussein alayhi salam, Arif and Bahaqi, Khafar Allah, Lahu ma taqatam min dhambi, wa ma taqha. Hadith number two is interesting because uh, someone called Harun ibn Kharaja says, I told Imam Sadiq salam, people report and narrate innahum yarvun annahu man, man zara al Hussein alayhi salam kanat lahu hajjatun wa umrah. They say whoever does ziyara of Abu Abdullah has the reward of hajj and umrah. Then Imam alayhi salam said, Man zarahu wallahi arif an bihaqqihi qufra lahu ma taqaddam min dhambi ma taqar. Imam said something more than that. It's not just a you know, reward of hajj and umrah. All his sins will be forgiven. Number three is from Imam Qazim alayhi salam. Imam Kazim alayhi salam says, Adna ma yusabu bihi za'irul Hussein. The lowest reward for the visitor of Abu Abdullah, Bishatir al Furat, the one who visits Imam Hussein next to the Euphrates, Ida arafa bihaqihi wa hurmatihi wa vilayatihi. And yuqfara lahu ma taqaddama min dhambi wa ma taqhar. The minimum reward for someone who acknowledges the right of Abu Abdullah and hurma of Abu Abdullah, the respect for Abu Abdullah. He observes the respect for Abu Abdullah. And accepts his vilaya is to be forgiven for all the sins. So this is the minimum. But for someone who knows his right and acknowledge that, observes respect for Abu Abdullah, and inshallah we'll talk about this, what does it mean? And believes in his velaya. Hadith number four is very similar to the previous ones. It's about the one that I've said, Mat'ataq Abr al-Husayn alayhi salam arif and bihaqqih. And number five is similar, six is similar, seven is similar, number eight, there is something new. A person says, uh, I told Abul Hassan alayhi salam, possibly means Imam Qadim alayhi salam, إِنَّهُمْ يَعْتُونَ قَبْرَ الْحُسَيْنَ عَلَيْهِ السَّلَامِ بِالنَّوَائِحِ وَالطَّعَامِ قَالَ قَدْ سَمِعْتِ قَالَ فَقَالَ يَا فَائِدْ The name of this person was Fa'id al-Hannat. مَنْ أَتَى قَبْرَ الْحُسَيْنَ بْنَ عَلِي عَلَيْهِمَا السَّلَامِ عَارِفًا بِحَقِّهِ قُفْرَ لَهُ مَا تَقَدَّمَ مِنْ ذَنْبِي وَمَا تَأَخَّرَ so this person asks about people who go for ziyara, but also they bring food, they distribute food, and they bring people who lament. Yeah, So Imam didn't mind and said, the main thing is that whoever goes with ma'rafa about his right would be forgiven. 
Hadith number 9 is again similar, number 10 is similar, number 11 is similar, number 12 is similar, 13 is similar, 14 has something new. Of course, these similar hadiths are important because they show that it, they are repeated again and again. Number 14, a person called uh, Fa'ed, the same person, says from Abd Saleh, which means Imam alayhi salam, but for some reason he didn't mention the name of Imam alayhi salam. Uh, he says, "Jual to fedak in al Hussein alayhi salam qad zarahun nas." Man yarifu hadha al amr wa man yunkiruhu. It seems that by that time the visit of Imam Hussein had become something uh, popular. And he says there are people who visit him who believe in this Amr, in this Wilaya and Imama, and people who don't believe. So Shia and non Shia go for Ziyarah. Even women are going and riding, for example, horses and camels, and they go. It has become like a kind of popularity or a kind of you know uh, becoming famous for doing this he says when I saw that it has become very popular and you know some people you know do it in order to become famous uh, I stopped going I didn't go he says then Imam alayhi salam makatha maliyan la yujibuni. For some time Imam stopped, didn't say anything. He was silent and didn't say anything to me. Then he said, Thumma aqbala alayya. He looked at me and said, Ya Iraqi, in shaharu anfusahum fala tashhar anta nafsak. If they make themselves, I don't know, famous or, you know, present themselves, they do something wrong. Okay, you don't do that. فَبَاللَّهِ مَا أَتَى الْحُسَيْنَ عَلَيْهِ السَّلَامُ آتٍ عَارِفًا بِحَقِّهِ إِلَّا غَفَرَ اللَّهُ لَهُ مَا تَقَدَّمَ مِنْ ذَنْبِهِ وَمَا تَأَخَى You must not stop, you must go. If people don't do it always with good intention or good, you know, way, it shouldn't stop you. By Allah, no one uh, goes to or comes to the grave of Imam Hussein alayhi salam uh, while acknowledging his right unless he or she is forgiven. Number 15 is also similar. Number 16. Uh, Imam Sadiq alayhi salam says, Man qad ata qabr al-Husayn alayhi salam arifan bihaqi kana ka man hajja thalatha hijaj ma'a Rasulullah. He's like doing three hajj with the Prophet. Not just one hajj. Three hajj and not just three hajj with the Prophet. And the last hadith which has something very uh, special even greater maybe than all these things is this one. I think this is the greatest actually reward. Muhammad ibn Abi Jarir al-Qummi qala sami'tu Abu al-Hasan al-Rida alayhi salam yaqulu la-Abi I heard Imam Rida telling my father man zara al-Husayn ibn Ali alayhi salam عارفاً بحقه كان من محدث الله فوق عرشه He would be one of the people that Allah would talk to them. Allah who is above عرش would talk to them. ثم قرى إن المتقين في جنات ونهر في مقعد صدق عند مليك مقتدر and now you realize why it was said Adna ma The minimum was forgiveness. And perhaps this is the maximum that you would be addressed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And perhaps this person who is addressed also is on that high position 
that when Allah talks to him, Allah raises him first to that level of uh, being uh, parallel uh, to Arsh or above Arsh and then Allah talks to him. So you see the ziyara of Abu Abdullah alayhi salam is very special but it has condition. Bishartaha wa shurutaha. There are conditions to be there are conditions to be real za'ir of Abu Abdullah alayhi salam means you know him and you acknowledge his right. It's not physical ziyara. If I visit an alim and take even picture with him or even record movie one hour with him, but I don't learn from him anything, can I say Zorto Aleman? Maybe people can say this, but in the real sense, no. Ma Zorta Aleman. Zorta Jasad al Alem. But you didn't do ziyara of alim because ziyara of alim is ziyara of his ilm. Not just ziyara of his body. Yes, you visited his body. Still, maybe it's good because it can encourage, you know, but it should be with a recognition of significance of knowledge and need for, you know, learning and this is the way that you can say, I have, you know, really visited this person. Or for example, uh, Imam alayhi salam. If I do ziyara of Imam alayhi salam, but I am not learning from Imam alayhi salam, I am not benefiting from Imam alayhi salam, I am not uh, considering him as someone who is wajib ta'a, as someone who is hujja of Allah. So I have not done ziyara of Imam alayhi salam. So if someone visits Imam Hussein alayhi salam and he believes in his Imam and he believes in his position and stances in life, especially his stance which led to his martyrdom and observes his hurma, his respect. So when I am there, at least over there, I should not commit any sin. I should not have any bad akhlaq with other people. How can I say I know that my imam is wajib ta'a and he is alive and then I don't feel ashamed of sinning in his presence. I don't feel ashamed of hurting other people. It's not possible. So if a muttaqi person, a committed person, does ziyara, but in the past has sins, shortcomings. Inshallah, those sins will be forgiven. This ziyara would, inshallah, guarantee his maqfara for the earlier sins and the later ones provided that condition of ma'rifah and observing his right and his hurma and his wilaya is there. Maybe in the past he didn't have this kind of understanding but at least now that he goes for ziyara of Imam alayhi salam he has this commitment and this recognition and then this ziyara has the potential of raising him after forgiveness to a level that he would be spoken by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So it means that 
gates of understanding would be open to this person. This person with the light of Ziara can understand better in the future. So visiting Imam alayhi salam is like going into a higher class, a higher level of education, of a spiritual journey. With every visit, you complete the previous stage and if you have some shortcomings inshallah they will be forgiven and removed and you will go to a higher level by the next time that you visit you should be able to go to another level so this is something that i wanted to share with you of course the best thing would be to visit Imam alayhi salam near his grave because that is where the soul of Imam has a maximum connection to the earth and the people of dunya but if you are not able to go there or it's not that you have to be there you know all the time even from distance, it's possible that we turn to Imam alayhi salam and do ziyarah of Imam alayhi salam. At least, you know, we say, Sallallahu alayka ya Abu Abdullah, three times. So we will get, uh, inshallah, lots of benefit. But if we can be there, and also, especially if we can be together with other Zawar and uh, in a collective way, demonstrate our acknowledgement of the right of Imam Ali Salam, that would be much better. May Allah, inshallah, accept the ziyarah of all people who are there right now and grant them, inshallah, uh, the greatest rewards that he has for the Zuvar of Baba Abdullah and help them inshallah return to their families and communities safely and may Allah inshallah include us among the rewards and grant us tawfiq inshallah to do proper ziyara of Imam Hussein alayhi salam and other members of Ahlul Bayt alayhi salam Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen